we have to mention a little bit of David De Gea as well because <coughs> this is a sti slightly iffy subject, but the amount of clean sheets for Manchester United. Now, some would say he's actually just broken it today, Schmeichel's record, although some would say he's tied it because there was one match against Arsenal about seven years ago where <laughs> he got subbed off. So does that match count or not? Either way, he's going to break the record Eventually for most clean sheets. Either uh, today he did it or he's going to do it in the next game on the next couple of games. Absolutely. And listen, every goalkeeper makes mistakes um, in, in, a, in a period of time. Like he's, he's been at Manchester United for a long time now. He's, he's, he's racked up a lot of appearances, but he deserves all the plaudits that he gets because the two saves in the first half have kept Manchester United in the game today. They were world-class saves and it uh, just shows you a, exactly what he's all about. Would he have broken the record earlier if he had your dad in front of him? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I'll let him answer that one. <laughs> I'll, I'll look him up and ask him that question. But De Gea, obviously, his future is very much in the air, but the performance is this season. We're talking about Marcus Rashford yeah. and Bruno Fernandes. We can go on and on. But if you don't have a good goalkeeper, if you don't have a reliable goalkeeper, you'll be in trouble. Yeah, you will. You know, and Bruno said they're in all four competitions as well. You know, they've got a lot to play for and they've got to keep clean sheets in the cup to go through as well. So... David Hay has been excellent. You know, he's had his critics over the, over the years, you know, making mistakes, but who doesn't make mistakes? Defenders make mistakes, but because the, there's only one keeper, they get penalised more because it's just that one, one, one position in it. So, no, he, he's been different class for the time he's been here and fully deserves all the credit if that clean sheet counts against Arsenal seven years ago. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's, he's going to break it one day or another and yeah, you never definitely. know what could happen in, in, a, in a cup final. He's either broken it today or is equal there, yeah. depending on which statistics you want to look at. But can I ask, in your honest opinion, did you expect Ten Hag to be having the season that he's having right now? A cup final, at least one cup final for him, at least. Well, listen, whether we expect or don't expect, the one thing about Manchester United, the expectation is always there and there, and there is a demand around the place. We've seen that in recent years with good quality managers who've come in and, and, and they've ultimately lost their jobs. Um, he's hit the ground running. He couldn't have wished for a better start to be in a cup final. Well, the first two games as well. They're, they're, yeah. They were all question marks straight away, but yeah. look where they there's are now. There's always going to be question marks, but listen, there's a process. Uh, I think a lot of football clubs pull the trigger a little bit too easy, especially nowadays with the outside influence and what, what have you. It takes a while to get going. It takes a while to believe in the process, to build something. And he looks like he's building something very special on, on what he's done so far. Well, we, we've seen the stat upstairs. I mean, he's won 70% of his, of his games in charge, Man United, so that's, that's some record to, yeah. to start with. So, uh, you know, he's a lot of credit in the world. He's, he makes subs in games where he thinks you need to change it, which he did today, and it worked out. And when that happens for a manager and the team's progressing and, and playing well for him, then you see the performance on the pitch and he seems to get everyone ticking at the minute.